Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Dale Beaumont and welcome to this brand new series which is titled Design My Website and we're going to show you how to design a great website for your growing business. With me in the studio we have two people that run a very successful website design and also development company. In the last 10 years they've built over 4,000 websites so they're highly qualified to speak on this subject and over the course of the next few episodes we're going to be diving in and covering a whole bunch of things that you need to know about how to design your website right through to what systems to use. We're going to be talking about should you renovate your existing website or build a new one. We're going to be talking about how to choose the right website developer, how to actually plan out your design, uh, e-commerce and a whole bunch more. So if you're looking to build a great website for your business, you're in the right place. Welcome to our presenters. We have Chris over here, Chris Walker, and we also have Tamsin, Tamsin Rothschild, and we're going to be talking all about how to build a great website. All right, so let's talk a bit about your credentials to, to kick things off. Uh, tell us a bit about your company and the amount of websites that you've built and why you're kind of qualified to speak on this subject. Sure. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, my name's Tamsin. I have been working with Magic Dust for seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. I've been working in the digital space for about 10 years. So the company Magic Dust was actually started by my sister Bianca and her business partner Ian Mills. Um, and the business started 10 years ago. At that time, the software that we were using, we were one of the first companies to start using a CMS, which is a content management system, which allowed people to actually administer the website themselves. At that time, it was, it was, it was pretty revolutionary 10 years ago. Obviously, it's quite commonplace now. But it was what it, what it enabled was the, every man to get a, 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 an affordable website. So it was really exciting. And yeah, that's how we began. Now, Chris, your company has built over 4,000 websites, and, uh, and you also speak to hundreds of uh, small business owners every month, right, about their various needs. So yeah, um, right. tell us a bit more about, about that and the types of clients you work with. Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, we've, we've built over 4,000 websites. Uh, we work predominantly with small to medium-sized business, so we've literally built websites for pretty much any type of business that you can imagine. Um, we currently have 3,000 uh, active clients and, uh, and 20 staff. All right, fantastic. So the topic for this uh, interview is about how to choose the right website developer. So we're going to get into a whole bunch of questions around uh, this subject. Uh, first thing that I want to know, tell us about some of the biggest mistakes because you talk to business owners all day every day and I'm sure you see the same mistakes coming up time and time again and people tuning in. I want to try and avoid all those mistakes. So uh, let's talk about what they are. Sure. Um, so the first one is not setting goals or having a plan for the website. Um, if you don't have a plan for what you're hoping to achieve with a website, it's really difficult to, uh, for, a, for a web design company to get the result that you're after. Yep. Um, so having some sort of setting some goals and having a plan is really important. And we're going to talk about how to do that in this series. Yeah. So uh, really yeah. looking forward to that. Yep. Um, hiring the wrong web developer. Um, so we, we get a lot of people that come to us that have had a frustrating experience with a, with a developer that hasn't quite understood what they need. Uh, they've either got a finished product that they, they didn't want or it uh, wasn't what they needed uh, or, or not, a, not a finished result at all. Mm. Or all right. the expectations weren't quite a match. All right, so mm. finding the right website developer, which is what we're going to talk about in detail yeah. shortly, but that's a great point. What yeah. else do we have? Um, not having meaningful content or content that speaks to the target market. Um, a lot of sites either have too much content or the content's not really speaking to the people that you want to do business with. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, also, not having a strategy of capturing leads. So, if you have traffic coming to your website, you need a way to to capture their details so that you can do further marketing. Converting so, those the, the traffic into a, an actual lead or an inquiry. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, if there, if there's not a, a call to action or a lead magnet, that makes that that can be difficult. All right, and we'll talk about lead yeah. magnets and things as we go through the series. Did you want to comment on that? Sometimes, sometimes people get fixated with it looks great, but you actually need your website to work for you. Yes. And that is a big mistake that people make. They get fixated with what it looks like. It obviously, there's a big percentage that has to look good, but you really want it to work for you. You want it to create business for you. So, and that's what that, that's addressing, capture, you know, is it capturing leads? Capturing leads, mm. great. And then the next one as well? 
Cool. Underestimating how much work it is. Um, there can be there can be a lot of people, where, particularly people that have never des uh, been involved in a website before, underestimate that there is actually quite a lot of work on the client side involved as well, like planning out content and uh, and signing off designs, approving images, that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's quite, in, particularly if you're dealing with an e-commerce site, it can be quite un can be quite a big project. Okay, so uh, we're going to go deep on the subject of how to choose the right website developer and answer a lot of questions around uh, this subject. Um, before we get into how to choose the right website developer, I suppose let's look at the alternative, which is you can build a website yourself these days, even as a non-technical um, sort of person. You don't have to be a developer. There are a few tools out there, but uh, sometimes as well there are some challenges with that as well. So um, when, when, when should someone try and build the website? website themselves? Yeah, um, so I think that if you're just starting out um, and you're, you have a tight budget, um, it's, it's, it's good to get something and you might not be able to afford to engage a company. Um, so what you can do with that is, uh, you know, you can hire, um, you know, you can use uh, one of the online tools like um, Weebly or, My, or, um, or Squarespace. Yep. Um, if you're testing a business idea that you're not sure whether it's a real business idea yet, um, you can set up a you know you can set up a website yourself, test the the idea of the business, and then work out um, whether it's whether it's worth investing the money. Um, also, um, also if you have technical knowledge and time, if you know a little bit about web design and a little bit about development, there's a lot of stuff that you can do yourself. Okay, and do you want to add to that uh, in terms of um, you know when should someone try to build it themselves? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest, the, that last point is probably the most important one, which is um, if you have the time, because the, the, it, it, takes much more, it takes much longer than you expect it's going to mm -hmm. take. And most business owners are busy running their businesses. So um, and it so, sort of sounds like a fun idea, to, like as a hobby, you know, to build a website, but when, when it's, it's taking too long and you're not getting it up, um, it, it can become frustrating, but yeah. Um, so if someone does want to build the website themselves or have a, have a go, what are some of the tools out there that they could use um, that, that don't cost a lot of money? Yeah, so um, Squarespace, Wix, uh, Shopify and Weebly are all, they're all based at like subscription models. Um, so they're all good, good places to get started. Um, Shopify obviously is the one that you would choose if you were, if you were, to, if you wanted to start up a shop. And do something with e-commerce. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's right. They all work on um, much the same way in that they, they um, you pay a subscription, um, you choose a template, you upload your own images, um, set up your own pages and away you go. And it's normally what, 20 to $50 a month, somewhere like that? Yeah, yeah, depending on the, on the service. Um, it's, yeah, it's just like a monthly subscription. Um, yeah, and it's a great, I mean, if you're just starting out and you, and you want to get online quickly, um, these, these tools are a great way to get started. Mm. Okay. Some of them do have a setup, uh, an initial setup fee, but then it, and then it's the ongoing. And they sort of work just like a, a sort of a drop and drag interface, do they? Or you just uh, t tap on yeah. your words and you just type? Yeah, essentially it's like a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, um, sort of, you know, drag and drop interface. Um, they're generally made, you, you don't need to have any coding experience. Um, you just need to have your, you know, your branding, your logo, um, the images that you want to use, that sort of thing, just have that sort of stuff set up. Obviously with the shop having product photos and, um, and uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Now obviously they s sound great. They're cheap um, and uh, sort of easy to use, but there are significant downsides as well with going with these, you know, DIY type of options. So, do you want to talk yep. about what are some of the downsides uh, to yep. using um, services like Squarespace, uh, Wix, and Weebly? Yeah, sure. So, um, it's the the first the first point is that it, it often. Uh, it appears easier than it looks. And there's a lot of marketing out there that's promoting, you know, build a website in a weekend. So people sort of have this expectation that it's, it's easy, it's quick, and it's fun. And I think that even puts more pressure on them because when, they pre when they're presented with it, and it's as hard, uh, well, it's harder than they expected. You know, they, it, it psychologically is, is, you know, it makes it more difficult because they're like, oh, they say it's easy and I don't know how to do this. Because it can be overwhelming. You, you log in and there's, you know, hundreds of templates to choose from. So the, the point there is that it, it often is harder than it at first appears. Um, if you have, you know, the, you know, if you are more technologically, you know, um, minded, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, 
it probably would be easier for people like that. But you know, if you if you struggle with you know downloading apps on your iPhone and things like that, it's pro it is probably going to be challenging. And that's normal. It's new technology, and it's 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 challenging. Now you mentioned the word templates before as well. I think it's important to mention that um, if you have an existing brand with colours and fonts and a particular style, you really um, you, you're kind of forced to leave that to the side and really go with the existing pre-built template. So you're really using someone yeah. else's look and feel. Hopefully, you can find one that matches your brand, yeah. but you're really not getting something that's custom, that's unique for you. Yeah. It's the same as everybody else. Yeah, that's right. It's fitting in, it's fitting in with, a, with a particular template. Yeah, okay. so there is some, obviously some limitations with that. What are some other downsides? Yeah, well, that, that one, I'll just jump to number four, which is you might not be able to achieve the finished product. So you are really limited to what you can do. Mm. Um, another one is your DIY websites used to be much easier, I mean, much cheaper than they are now. But now with trying to build a WordPress website, by the time you've actually gets gets by the time you've gotten started with a good looking template, you might have outlaid a couple of hundred dollars. You've got the template and you still have to do it yourself. And they're so advanced now, which you know, obviously because they want to give people all the bells and whistles, it's it's really challenging. And it, it really is, is more difficult than, than people expect. And and it's more expensive. So you might end up laying down a couple of hundred dollars and then you don't have a website. And the thing with building a website People think about the cost, the money, the money, the money, but most often the, the devastation is the time that people have invested. They spend. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.